Hello, welcome to the first video in this series of how I paint my American Civil War miniatures from Cracker Line Minis. Um, this particular video set, it will be part one of a two-parter on how I paint my firing Confederate rebels. So to start off, uh, I start off by painting the pants and this color is nutmeg brown. Each popsicle stick setup that I have will have 12 models on it, which is one entire pack. And then uh, I paint six of them with this color, the nutmeg brown. I really like these models for as tiny as they are. They have some very, very nice details. And so major kudos to whoever the sculptor was because they did a fantastic job. And uh, so the first six I do with that nutmeg brown and now I'm going on to the next four, which I'll paint in a color which is called bonnet blue. A lot of times I'll use just a little bit of water on the brush to help thin down the paint just a bit. Um, the apple barrel paints are kind of thick and so thinning them out helps the paint to spread better and gives you better coverage on all the models. And I find even though the paint is cheaper, I can still get some very nice results. So right there I uh, needed to uh, fix that guy because he kept falling off his sticky tack. So I did four in bonnet blue, six in the nutmeg brown, and now I'm doing two in the color khaki. And once we add the wash later on, uh, that really helps to blend in everything and brings out a lot of the detail in the models. All right, so uh, while the first set I was painting there dries, the next set I'm going to paint uh, the coats on now. And I'm using a color from Apple Barrel called Country Gray. Again, just thinning it down a little bit. Um, trying not to just slop the paint on there. Trying to be careful of all the details. Making sure I get the coats and the hats all painted. When I'm doing these, i got to make sure to remember and remind myself to flip the models upside down and make sure I get underneath the arms also and get the coats in between the arms. So if you're not careful, sometimes you can miss those. The brush I'm using right here is a uh, fine point tip brush from Citadel Paints. Um, I use that also for all, a lot of my Warhammer models. This paint brush is one of my main paint brushes. I go through them a lot. So I try to hit each uh, coat and hat throughout all of this and then I'll go back and sometimes have to do a little touch up just to make sure that uh, the paint is on every part of the model so we don't got any of the primer uh, s sneaking through if it's too thin somewhere. So really in some of them that are were painted at first I mean you can, it already it's making a huge difference from going from the gray primer and it's starting to bring out the details in these models when I'm setting up my popsicle sticks uh, sometimes I'll try to match up the different poses because even though they're all firing not all of them are firing some are in the process of loading their muskets and so I try to match them up a little bit and then later when I put them on the stands, um, I'll vary the poses. So a lot of them are in the, I believe what they're called, uh, Kepi hats. Hopefully I said that right. Um, that one was just in a regular old hat, so he got a little different color. I used a burnt umber. So right now I'm using the Citadel Cadian Flesh Tone. And uh, this particular paint pot is about four bucks at my local GameStop, game store, game store. 
And again, just a little bit of water to thin it out and you get very, very nice coverage from it. So on these models, I just really carefully try to touch the hands and get the uh, faces and necks. Sometimes if I feel like it, I'll try to give a little hair color on the models, but most of the time these ones are uh, just good enough with the flesh tone. Later on, I'll go back with the country gray and do a little touch up where some of the flesh tone color got onto the shoulders too far. Um, yeah, I think that's what I'm doing right now. So just hitting that up and then also uh, just hitting any spots on the coats that were maybe just a little bit too thin and needed a little bit more of the gray. So already, already right there, you have a really nice uh, look. I mean, they're starting to really come alive and get some nice details. So right here, I'm using the color chocolate brown to paint the muskets. And uh, I always try to make sure I'm, I'm flipping these popsicle sticks around all over the place, trying to make sure I get every angle uh, on these models. So you can see you know, when I'm flipping this all over. I try hard to make sure uh, when I'm going through that all the muskets are straight. The metal is really soft, so it has a tendency to bend. So I make sure to straighten it out as much as I can. So occasionally you might see one that's not quite there. Like that one. One thing I find is I just got to be really, really patient and take my time and not rush and uh, make sure I still myself. You can see how I'll put my fingers on my other hand or onto the stick itself to help steady my hand as I'm painting. And a lot of times I find myself holding my breath. I don't know if anyone else does that. I do it all the time. As I'm painting, I'll start holding my breath. I don't know if that's like, I don't know. When I'm hunting, it's the same way I will hold my breath when I pull the trigger. So try to hit up each musket and then just double check everything. Make sure I had everything painted. And if you find something you missed, like there, you just go and hit it up again. Okay, so next I'm going to go on to painting the um, musket barrels. And this is where I'm using the Folk Art Sterling Silver. I, I get a nice look from it. And once you apply the wash, it helps give it that um, old, older look like it's been used and shot in several battles. And just a really, really, really thin line. And you just take your time and go really s carefully and just keep it as straight as possible. And then some of the sculpts had uh, bayonets on them, so I have to make sure I paint those. So I have two different colors. I have like uh, a, a king's gold yellow and a golden sunset. And I believe I'm using the golden sunset to paint the suspenders and belts and uh, straps on the backs for the different things that the soldiers are carrying. Um, Again, just really, really, really small bit of paint on the brush, going very lightly. Uh, I'd rather go several light layers to get um, the look, and uh, instead of just trying to slop it all on at once. So once I get the bag, then I go to the front and just try to hit carefully every strap that I can find. And this will really start bringing out detail in the model. In all honesty, they're already looking really nice. And once we apply the wash, it's going to be even better. Mm -hmm. 
and then uh, I like to put a little dot of gold or yellow on these Kepi hats. Uh, just pretty certain I've seen in pictures that they have a little metal or something up there. Okay, so I use, now I'm just using black to paint the canteens and uh, pouches for where the soldiers would hold like their uh, musket balls and uh, black powder. So each of these models in this particular set had, uh, like I said, one pouch and usually a canteen. Some of the other variations will have different, uh, different packs and such on their backpacks and everything. So just look over the model really carefully and just find and paint it whatever color you'd like it to be. I choose black just because on the gray coats it sticks out a little bit better. And I already have a lot of brown in there, which would be more like leather and such. So I use the black. And again, just a little bit of paint on the brush, not a whole lot. And just looking everything over and making sure it looks good. All right. So now we're going on to the burnt umber, and I'm going to use that to paint the bases. Um, on my Union Army, I worried about painting the shoes and everything, but with these guys, I just decided since it's going to blend into the ground foam and, and sand and everything later on when I apply that to the bases that it's really not much of a deal. So I just use the burnt umber and also because that's what will be my earth uh, tone on the stands once they're glued on. So these guys are looking really nice. And I, I hope you think so, too. I appreciate any, like, comments or questions you might have and critiques. I'm not a world-class painter any, by any means. I mean, these probably I would only consider to be tabletop quality. I'm not trying to win any competitions. I just want to play and have fun. And I want the models to look good. And I like it when I go play a game and people go, like, wow, those are really cool. Those look really nice. It's, it's a proud feeling. All right, anyway, so make sure to hit like and subscribe if this is something you've enjoyed, and I'd love to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you.